What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be talking about free agency, but this time we're going to be including all NFC North teams. That's right. We're going to be mixing it up a little bit and adding some more teams to this. Now, I think it's important to talk about all the NFC North teams and know your division. You know, know what the other teams in your division are doing, how well they're actually doing in free agency, at least according to someone else's grades. And I think that's very important to know what they lost, what they gained, what the Lions are going to have to worry about next season. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video. Now, let's start off with the very top of the division. We're going to be starting off with the Green Bay Packers. Now, I actually did not grade these myself. You know, I let Pro Football Focus do their grades. Now, they didn't grade player by player, but they graded the whole free agency as a whole. Obviously, free agency is not done. You know, there's still moves that could be made. Maybe by the time you're watching this, other moves were made that changes things. But most of it's, you know, really slowing down. So we're going to be looking at this right now. And again, I'm using Pro Football Focus to do the grades by team because if I do it, people are going to call me biased or whatever. So I'm not going to mess with it, okay? We're going to let it do its thing. If you guys want to look these up, you can. But let's start off with Green Bay Packers, who finished 13 and 3. They were first in the NFC North last season, unfortunately. Green Bay Packers, man. Averaging 23.5 points per game, and they allowed 19.6 points per game. Going into this offseason, their needs were wide receiver, interior linebacker, defensive line, tight end, and offensive tackle. Those were the needs. Those were back in like January. So those were before free agency and the draft. Obviously, draft hasn't happened yet, but those were the needs. Now, first, we're going to look at the players that they lost and look at the players that they added and look at kind of the summary of, um, you know, the moves. So the first, we're going to start off with the players that they lost. Uh, first up, we have Blake Martinez, the linebacker. Definitely a big loss. Maybe their biggest loss this offseason was Blake Martinez. Very solid linebacker yeah a big loss here and they they really did try to you know replace him in free agency but it's very hard to replace a player like that so Blake Martinez was a very big loss good tackler for Green Bay Packers for sure um Brian Belaga was another guy they lost their offensive tackle definitely a big loss you don't want to lose tackles that always stinks when you do he's a little bit older but he was a very good tackle in the league and they definitely again tried to replace that position as well you always have to have those tackles you know you want to have good tackles they lost Brian Belaga that was probably their second biggest loss maybe their biggest loss this offseason they also lost Tremont Williams their cornerback uh Geronimo Allison who was the wide receiver. I think that's actually a sleeper big loss because Geronimo Allison was a solid player when he was on the field, but no, he's not with the Green Bay Packers anymore. Uh, Kyle Fackler, Jimmy Graham, again, right now, not really too much of a, too big of a deal. In the past, that would have been a big deal. Jimmy Graham, right? Like, oh no, but not, not right now. He's just not the same player right now. However, one team in the North may have thought he was the same player of five years ago. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But now let's talk about the players that they actually added. What players did they bring in to try to make up for some of them holes, add some, you know, talent to their roster? Now, these are just the main additions. There's obviously, you know, some resignings and small ones like that. And uh, first off, we have Christian Kirksey, the linebacker. Now, Christian Kirksey was signed to a two-year, $16 million deal. A very good tackler. And that's kind of what I think they were going for here to replace a guy like Blake Martinez. The problem with Christian Kirksey and the problem, according to Pro Football Focus, is his coverage ability. And that was one of their main problems with this entire uh, free agency period that they have. They really did not like the move of Christian Kirksey. He was a very, very big liability when it came to coverage. According to Pro Football Focus, he ranks 64 out of 75 off-ball linebackers in coverage and and 65th in passer rating allowed at 113.2. So they're definitely not getting a good coverage linebacker here. However, they are getting a guy that can stop in the run, and I think that's what they were looking for. Next up, they added Rick Wagner. Um, yeah, Rick Wagner from the Detroit Lions. They did that. Now, Rick Wagner had a very bad last season. Not too bad before that, but last season was very, very bad. He's had some inconsistencies and struggles with injuries. They brought him in on a two-year $11 million deal, so not a huge deal. So it wasn't like they over like or paid him way too much money. But at the same time, I'm not super mad they have him at tackle. Hopefully, we can get some sacks on that side. Uh, Mercedes Lewis, a tight end that they that they uh, brought back for one-year $2.25 million deal. They also brought back Lazard, which I thought was important to point out. I thought Lazard was a very, very good wide receiver. So bringing him back was huge, especially with the limited amount of weapons that Aaron Rodgers already has and the limited amount of weapons that they even added. That was the main problem with Pro Football Focus and their offseason with the fact that they didn't add any weapons. Now, there still are some solid guys out there that they could add, and maybe by the time you're watching this, they did, and it changes things, but they didn't add a weapon there. Christian Kirksey was a move they definitely did not like. So overall, they gave them a below-average grade. I didn't think it was too bad. I mean, I didn't think it was great. You know, I don't think they improved really, maybe really anywhere. I think they just kind of stayed the same or maybe got a little bit worse. Because, you know, Rick Wagner, I don't think that's Brian Balaga level. Christian Kirksey, I don't think it's Blake Martinez level. You know, I think they added some pieces, brought some back. But really, they didn't get many weapons for Aaron Rodgers. And I think they're putting a lot of stake into this draft, which they do have a pretty good amount of picks. So maybe they'll be able to make it right there. Now let's talk about the team that finished second in the NFC North. And I think it's right here. Yes, that is the Minnesota Vikings who finished at 10-6. and six. Now, let's... 
keep this thing going. Minnesota Vikings up next. They scored 25 point, I think it's 25.4 points per game or 25.9 points per game. They allowed 18.9 points per game. Now, coming into the offseason, our needs were cornerback, offensive line, wide receiver, safety, defense tackle, and possibly a quarterback. But we know the whole Kirk Cousins thing, they brought Kirk Cousins back, so that wasn't really a need. Um, but they do have some secondary needs for sure, and offensive line could use some help. Starting off with the players that they lost. The first main one was Stefan Diggs. We know they traded away Stefan Diggs. They got a pretty solid return, though, with picks, so it actually wasn't a huge loss. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. They also lost Trey Waynes, which is a solid corner, not a great corner, an okay corner, I would say. You know, he could get the job done. They did lose another cornerback here, though, so that is someone to help in the secondary, which their secondary was already not that good, so to lose a cornerback is tough. We'll see if they, you know, go out in free agency and try to replace that. Everson Griffin, I'll talk about that in a second. Everson Griffin, um, the older defensive end, or... Um, you know, defensive end, defensive lineman, whatever you want to say. Anyways, he still was able to get pressure. So this is another pretty solid loss for the Minnesota Vikings. Mackenzie Alexander, another cornerback that they lost on, already struggling at that cornerback position. Maybe they're trying to move on from some cornerbacks and bring some new ones in. And hopefully it works out because they were a good defense. They just really weren't good in the secondary, which is kind of strange. But hey, you got a lot of guys in the front seven who played very well. They had some solid safeties. The cornerback play just wasn't very good. They also lost out on Linval Joseph, the defense tackle. They lost Jaron Curse to uh, yours truly, the Detroit Lions. Andrew Sandejo, they lost him as well. Another safety and Xavier Rhodes. And uh, what's kind of sad is Pro Focus said they think their best move was actually moving on from Xavier Rhodes, which is kind of tough, you know, to have your best move being cutting somebody. But Xavier Rhodes was just that bad last season. You know, he ranked as one of the worst cornerbacks in the league when it came to coverage. He was awful. He ranked 112 out of 119 according to Profile Focus in coverage grade. He allowed an 83.5 catch rate. 83.5% catch rate. We talked about that. His completion percentage was incredible that he allowed. Their cornerbacks as a whole weren't very good. Xavier Rhodes actually wasn't a bad move. Now, some people ask me, hey, why don't you want Xavier Rhodes? That's exactly why. I'm not trying to mess with that. Now, they did add some pieces, though. First piece they added was uh, Michael Pierce to a three-year, $28 million deal. They got a really nice run stuffer there to definitely help out after some defense line losses. I think that was a solid move. They also tagged Anthony Harris, not giving him the deal, but they tagged him. Uh, they brought in a fullback, CJ Ham for a four-year, $12.25 million deal, which is actually a re-sign. It wasn't a new player. They also brought in Eric Wilson, who was a second round tender the cornerback and and as we know the trade that they gave away for Stefan Diggs so the main problem here with the Minnesota Vikings and their free agency was the fact that you know they didn't really replace any of the cornerback position they don't go they didn't go and spend big money at the cornerback spot now not a lot of people wanted to do that because the cornerback position was very expensive this offseason we know about that but they didn't really add anybody to it they didn't add anybody they just lost players and even if you use the draft one, you're, you're obviously, you know, you're risking using a guy that hasn't been in the NFL before, and you have a lot of holes to fill in the cornerback, not just one. So that's definitely something that they're going to have to try to do in the draft. Michael Pierce was a solid signing. This was the worst graded one by Pro Football Focus. They actually gave them a poor grade. They thought it was a very bad free agency. I thought it wasn't awful, except for the fact that, again, they didn't really touch on the cornerback spot at all, and they did lose some pretty pretty major pieces there. So now let's move on to the team that finished third in the NFC North, and this team is the Chicago Bears. Now, the Chicago Bears, like I said, finished third in the NFC North last season at 8-8. Eight and eight. They averaged 17.5 points per game. Obviously, that's not very good, but they only allowed 18.6 points per game, so, you know, not bad. 8-8. Eight eight. Now, coming into this season, their needs were a quarterback, pretty much quarterback competition, a tight end, a guard, a defensive back, edge rushers, and interior linebacker. Now, let's take a look at some of the players that they they lost. They lost Prince of Mukamara, who wasn't actually terrible last season. They actually cut him. They cut Taylor Gabriel. Um, they actually moved on from Nick. I can't say his name. Kawalaski, I'm not even going to try it. The linebacker, I feel like I should be able to say that, but again, I can't. Uh, Leonard Floyd, they, they cut him as well, the edge rusher. So yeah, they moved us from solid players. Obviously, Chase Daniel is now with Detroit Lions. They moved him. Kyle Long retired. Ha ha Clinton Dix, their safety. They lost some players, some players they cut. And now let's see who they added to try to make up for those losses. First player they added was Nick Foles, the main one, right? We all know about the trade they made to go get Nick Foles. They traded away their fourth round pick to get Nick Foles, which honestly, a fourth round pick isn't very bad to get a quarterback. I mean, think about it. If you killed the fourth pick in the draft, fourth round pick, how many quarterbacks are really going to be there? I feel like maybe Jake Fromm, maybe, maybe Jalen Hurts, but probably not. I feel like they're going to go way earlier than that. So yeah, it's actually a very good trade. I think needing a quarterback competition with Mitchell Trubisky. They also brought back Danny Trevathan for a three-year, $21.75 million deal deal interior defense interior linebacker Robert Quinn was the main guy they went out and got five years 70 million however 
this wasn't a love move even by Bears Wire, okay? Bears Wire did not love this move. Their concern was, one, he has a lot of missed games in the past five seasons. Last season was his, a very good season for him, 11 and a half sacks, but before that, very inconsistent. Another concern was that 20% of the cast space was between him and Khalil Mack, and both of these guys are going to be 30 soon. So, yes, there were definitely some concerns, but he is a very good pass rusher, at least last season with 11 and a half sacks. So, you know, they're hoping that they can get a nice edge rusher with him and Khalil Mack and kind of just, you know, wipe out offenses. But, again, there are some concerns there. Jimmy Graham, the tight end they brought in this is probably the worst move that they did make two years 60 millis so that's what the general consensus is that this is a terrible move now i don't think it was awful to go get a veteran tight end uh, i think he has shown you know signs that hey i'm still a pretty good tight end but eight million dollars a year is a lot of money for a guy like jimmy graham and the production that he has been putting up not very good there Deion bush um was another guy that they resigned already burned so they got on a one-year deal that could be for the cornerback spot Again, don't expect a lot from him, but, you know, maybe a little bit of competition there. Uh, Jordan Lucas. So they made some solid moves, but again, this wasn't a loved free agency by pro football focus. Foles one, I think, was actually a solid trade. You know, a fourth-round pick is pretty good if you're trying to get some quarterback competition. He's shown flashes that he can be a really good quarterback. Obviously, he's won a Super Bowl, but he's also shown a lot of average flashes. Actually, most of the time, he looks very average. So we'll see who the starter is. The Lions could be playing both Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles this season. Maybe just Nick Foles, maybe just Trubisky. I don't know. But obviously, that's the biggest move that they made. Robert Quinn, who is a very good player last season, definitely has a lot of concerns to go with him. Um, and over Overall, the Pro Football Focus, Pro Football Focus actually gave them a below average grade. And now let's move on to Detroit Lions, which we know what the Lions did. I'll just kind of skim through this one pretty quick because we already know what we did. Uh, players that we lost, Darius Slay, we made a trade to get a third and a fifth in return. We also lost Mike Daniels, Graham Glasgow, Snacks Harrison, Aishon Robinson, uh, Devon Kennard. Those are the major losses that we had. In one here, the main one that Pro Football Focus didn't like was our move to go get Big V. And instead of just bringing back Graham Glasgow for basically almost the same amount of money. Now, I think a lot of you guys thought that way as well. I told you guys why I believe that is. I think they're just focusing on tackles over guard. I think that's exactly what their focus is. And uh, so I, that's my opinion. That's what I think it is. Even though Graham Glasgow has been super versatile and very good for us, I've made a really good case for Glasgow. But at the same time, I think that's what they're doing. Um, adding Desmond Trufant, we added uh, J. Ron Curse, kind of just a special teams, nice player there. Jamie Collins, Big V, Chase Daniel. Um, we also added Harmon, and we added Danny Shelton. So those were the main moves that we made. You know, looking at the lines, we were also given a below average grade they thought that Jimmy Collins was a was a move that was high risk, high reward. They loved the move to go get um, Danny Shelton and stuff like that. I thought, you know, there was definitely some moves that people didn't like, like the Chase Daniel move that I liked. But they didn't love the move to move Darius Slay and bring in Desmond Trufant. I think on paper that doesn't make any sense at all. However, when you when you look at how the relationship was there, I think it was a must. So I don't think their grade should be lower because of that. I mean, I really don't think that could have worked out. But that is exactly what happened. So that is what the NFC North looks like this offseason. Tell me who you guys think won the NFC North. A lot of people believe it was the Detroit Lions as the other teams weren't as exciting this offseason as last season. Last season was very exciting with the Packers and the Lions making huge moves. They did say the Lions did win this free agency. Obviously, the Detroit Lions or the Detroit Patriots, some may say, I think, you know, had the most exciting offseason with a lot of moves being made but yeah there's definitely some holes for all of these teams all these teams need to fill in some holes for the draft one team is the bears they don't have tons of picks they did trade away their fourth and they don't pick until the second round but they do have two second round picks so we'll just have to wait and see what happens but anyways let me know your thoughts who won the nfc north thank you bye for watching and i'm out